What's going on guys? Welcome to a chat with Beastly. Now, before I get started, I don't normally do videos like this. I normally talk about video games when I have time to make videos, but there's a lot of things going on in the world today. And me as a father of five, I can't just sit back, play video games and go to work without recognizing that the political climate is very toxic. There's a lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of division and anger in typical American society. And I wanted to talk to you guys about a particular part of it and give you guys my thoughts because I think it's actually kind of important that we can have a discussion and it doesn't get crazy, it doesn't get violent, and people can express their points of view. So that's what I'm here for and that's what I'm going to talk about. Today's topic is the Democratic Party. So, as of late, it seems that both political parties are in disarray and if the winds are any indication, they won't be changing for a while. With multiple investigations into Russia's attempts to affect the 2016 presidential election, special counselor Bob Mueller's recent indictments of Paul Manafort and Roger Stone, as well as the guilty plea from a Trump volunteer who lied to the FBI, there seem to be many questions. But I, like many of you, don't think that there's much to the whole Russia-Trump story. Why do I say that? Well... There's been numerous investigations into the whole Trump colluded with Russia to steal the election narrative. And to this very moment, after multiple investigations, there's been zero evidence of any actual collusion with the Trump campaign. Democrats like Dianne Feinstein have gone on the record recently stating that there is still 0% evidence to back up these claims. But there have been new and controversial claims made that have shocked the Democratic Party. And I don't know what they can do at this point to convince the typical American voter that the Democratic Party is actually on the level and fair. Now, when I grew up in the 80s, I was actually taught that the Democratic Party was there for the common man, African Americans, women, the disenfranchised, and basically anybody who was done wrong by a system that sometimes steps on those without power. As an adult, I've come to the realization that in many ways, the new Democratic Party is the opposite of what I was taught it once was. They practice identity politics, obstruction, even against bills and laws that would help Americans, and they have an increasingly politically correct culture where no one can be offended as well as groups that hide in the shadow of the Democratic Party like Antifa, whose sole mission seems to actually be to conduct themselves as fascists, beating and stomping anyone with conservative or differing viewpoints. Recent news broke that Hillary Clinton was involved with high-ranking officials in the early 2000s. These officials devised a plan to corner the world uranium market. This scheme was actually being investigated by Bob Mueller, the head of the FBI at the time, and who at this moment is investigating Trump-Russian collusion. The FBI investigation found evidence of racketeering, extortion, bribery, and kickbacks. And while knowing all these facts, the FBI under Bob Mueller allowed this transaction to take place without alerting Congress. Hillary was one of the nine high-ranking officials of the U.S. who approved this deal, and her foundation shortly afterwards received $145 million from confirmed Uranium One investors. Uranium One is a company that was acquired by Russia, and they actually had a plan to acquire uranium from around the world to get their hands on as much as possible. This on its face appears to be very questionable. Why would anyone in any position of authority in the U.S. willingly sell 20% of our uranium capacity to a hostile actor? I've heard this question asked many times, and in my opinion, there's really no good answer. It makes absolutely no sense. It gets worse, though. In recent news, interim DNC chairwoman Donna Brazil dropped a bombshell in her soon-to-be-released book on the hacking of the DNC. Donna explains in her book that in August of 2015, only four months after Hillary announced her candidacy and over one year before she officially took the nomination, Hillary Clinton had taken control of the DNC. In a signed agreement, Hillary and her campaign agrees to raise money and pay off the debt of the DNC in exchange for having control of the DNC, which gave her the ability to rig the campaign against Bernie Sanders over one year before the primary election. An excerpt from Donna Brazil's book says, quote, When I got back from a vacation in Martha's Vineyard, I at last found the document that described it all, the joint fundraising agreement between the DNC, the Hillary Victory Fund, and Hillary for America. The agreement signed by Amy Dacey, the former CEO of the DNC, and Robbie Mook, 
with a copy to Mark Elias specified that in exchange for raising money and investing in the DNC, Hillary Clinton would control the party's finances, strategy, and all the money raised. Her campaign had the right of refusal of who would be the party's communication director, and it would make final decisions on all other staff. The DNC also was required to consult with the campaign about all other staffing, budgeting, data, analytics, and mailing. I had been wondering why it was that I couldn't write a press release without passing it by Brooklyn. Well, here was the answer, end quote. Bernie Sanders and many others had accused the DNC of placing their fingers on the scale in Hillary's favor by manipulating the debate schedules, times, and fundraising. And apparently, as per Donna Brazil, this was all true. Hillary Clinton rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders, who never actually stood a chance. Donna Brazil's book also explains how Bernie was alerted to this scheme, and he took it hard, yet he still supported Hillary Clinton, even after she stole the primary from him. Now we find out through a Senate hearing that the infamous Trump dossier was actually acquired through Russian political insiders at the behest of Christopher Steele, a former British spy and member of MI6. The dossier was actually paid for by the DNC and Hillary Clinton. This information was attained as Congress had subpoenaed the bank records of Fusion GPS, the organization that was commissioned to compile negative data on then-candidate Trump. Apparently, the Clinton campaign, as well as the DNC, which she was in control of, had paid over $9 million to have this dossier crafted to smear Trump and, in essence, rig the general election. So, what did Democrats do at this point? The leader of the Democratic Party actually colluded with Russia and allowed them to acquire 20% of U.S. uranium capacity. Hillary Clinton rigged the primary and paid for a fake dossier to smear a political opponent. There are millions of good American voters who have been disenfranchised by this corruption, and it is corruption. Democrat members of Congress have gone on the record recently and expressed their disgust for the way the Clinton machine has uprooted democracy, and not only cheated Bernie Sanders and his supporters, but even those who voted for Hillary Clinton, thinking that she was a respectable candidate who valued free and fair elections. Hillary Clinton and her campaign also sold out our country. Signing 20% of the U.S. uranium to Russia almost certainly hurt the national security of the United States, and yeah, like all her crimes, she is yet to be held accountable. Knowing that the DNC as well as their preferred candidate couldn't have cared less about being fair, valuing their base, and allowing the people of America to choose their candidate, what will happen to the Democratic Party? What's going to happen to the DNC? Bernie Sanders created a great movement, but I feel like he killed his own credibility when he went along with the scheme even after knowing that Hillary cheated him and possibly stole the primary from him. To know that the process was rigged and remained silent while steering his base into Hillary's arms is an unforgivable act in my eyes. So I ask you, what can the Democratic Party do to regain its standing with the people? Many voters are weary of the party now after seeing that they worked alongside Hillary to cheat the system. There are fair-minded leaders in the Democratic Party, but as we saw last year, the DNC expelled those who wouldn't get in line. People like Nina Turner, Tulsi Gabbard, and Keith Ellison have great messages for the people and can take the movement Bernie started in meaningful directions, in my opinion. But that can only happen when the Democratic Party leadership is purged and we have leadership in the Democratic Party that benefits the people instead. I'm really anxious to know what you guys think about the state of the DNC or the Democratic Party. How can the party of the common man attain its trust once again? You guys tell me in the comment section, what do you think should happen to Hillary Clinton and the people who helped her with these questionable deals? Should she have a special prosecutor like Bob Mueller? Seems only fair to me. Should the Attorney General impanel a grand jury to look into this? Or should we do what we've been doing and do nothing at all? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed our little chat, please leave a like to lift up the channel. And don't forget, you can always support me and my work on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.